So we're studying here in uh, Revelation 15, and we were talking about verse 4 where it says, Who shall not fear thee? And so we went over Revelation 6 and saw those verses in 15 to 17 that talked about great men, mighty men that call out to the rocks and mountains to fall on them. That, that's because they are fearful of the wrath of God. And we also went to Exodus 15 and covered verses 16 to 18 because it is saying there that who shall not fear thee. And then I want to look over in Revelation 21. Just go over there quickly if I can. Revelation 21 and 23 to 27, it says, And the city had no need of sun. Now, I want you to know when we talk about Revelation 21, this passage, this chapter talks about the holy city, New Jerusalem. It, it says, Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this city is the city of God. It's New Jerusalem, and it's the bride of Christ. And it's a very real place. It's a place where I want to spend all my eternity there in that city. I, I see in Revelation 21 and verse 23, it says, The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And in verse 27, it says, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles, neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. I want you to understand that the only ones that can enter into that city are those that have their names written in the book of life. But in two of these verses, like 26, I see the honor of the nations into it. I see the nations referred to in verse 24, Revelation 21, 24, the nations of them. Uh, I just want you to know because the nations does not include the bride. I, I want you to see that it. That word nation instead of heathen peoples or heathen. You know, we have this thought in our. Right. People have this concept that when Jesus comes, all his enemies are just going to be completely destroyed. But if you look in Zechariah 14, I want to read you a passage out of Zechariah 14. I'll read you verses 7, or no, 16 to 19. It says, And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations. You see, that's left. Those that are the survivors is what that's talking about. It says, it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem e shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Verse 17 says, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And verse 18 says, And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague. 
wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that comes not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. And verse 19 says, this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. I just want you to realize that there are survivors of those people that come against the Lord to make war with them. They're not all completely destroyed. Because in Zechariah 14, we see that, that that day of the Lord is when uh, I, you can see that the Lord comes in that day where he plants his feet upon the Mount of Olives. And it says uh, in verse 9, it says, The Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. So it's plain to me that this is talking about when the Lord comes and that there are people that are left over of those nations that came in war against him. And, and if they choose not to worship, you know, the Lord gives us a free will as to whether we worship or not. But on those that will not come, they will suffer the plague, as it says um, in that verse 17, even upon them shall be no rain. So does that make sense? I hope it does. In um, verse... Are their names written in the book of life? No, they can't come in. They can't come in to the gates. That's right. They're going to have to leave it at the gate. They what? They'd have to leave it at the gate. I think that they will bring um, glory or whatever. Their first, first they fruits. The they, they walk in the light and they can bring, they can come to the gate, but they cannot enter in. Remember this, that it said that, though, that's exactly right. That's what I was going to say. It doesn't really spare. Angel had sword to guard the gate. Cherubim. Cherubim were set at the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 after that Adam and Eve had sinned and they were expelled from that Garden of God. Right, right. But here, when we were just reading the description of the city uh, in Revelation 21, verse 12, it says, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels you see that where'd you read that that was in revelation 21 and verse 12 and and then it, it says the gates are not shut it, it says that in verse 25 the gates of it shall not be shut at all for there shall be no night there they don't shut the gate but believe me your name's not written in the book of life. You're not going in. That's why those angels are there. They keep the way of the tree of life. Okay, now I'm going back into Revelation 15. And I am looking at... Okay. Go ahead. Move on at, yep. There on 24, Revelation 1, 24, it says, And the nations of them which are saved, to walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth to bring their glory and honor into it. Uh, you know, I haven't looked up that word into it. It's like, uh, I think if they are not, it tells us very plainly that if they don't have, it says, says 20, to or into. Uh huh. Well, see, you could bring, you can come so far. Yeah. But if your name is written in the book of life, you can enter into it. I hope that's clear. Yeah. That's one of them words that that's used in many, many little words have that same I. Yes. I yes. In the Greek. So it could be into, unto, to, towards, for, among. It uses all of them to express that word. So it could be to instead of into. Let, let me just read you um, 22, Revelation 22, 
14 and 15, it says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And verse 15 says, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and make a lie. Uh, the question is sometimes, who are these people? Well, I believe that that's when S Satan is loosed and uh, at the end of the millennial reign, I'm reading from Revelation 20 and verse 7 to 9, it says, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Who, who is he going to go out and deceive if there aren't people out there to be deceived? Um, and verse 9 says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And then the next verse talks about Satan being cast into the lake of fire. That's in verse 10. It says the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So at that point, there, once he is cast into the lake of fire, that's after the millennial reign, and after he is loosed and goes out and gathers a group of nations to come against the city of God. Fire comes down, consumes them, okay? This might be where there's two, there's a dog and Magog, is that? Yes, it war? is. Yes. You know, it talks the about. The one is Armageddon, and then there's the battle of Gog and Magog. Uh, sometimes people get confused, and because it, it mentions in this verse 8 of Revelation 20, Revelation 20 and verse 8, to dis, go, shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. When we were looking at Ezekiel 38 the um, last week, when we were talking about the war, be the Armageddon, yeah. 38 and 39 is talking about that battle of Armageddon. And Gog and Magog are mentioned in Ezekiel 38. So sometimes people think, well, that's not going to happen until after, but that's not right. There's going to be a, a battle. The first battle is when Jesus comes back again after the seven years tribulation. When he comes back, there's going to be a great battle. Right. And it's going to be fought for Medigo, Med, Megiddo. 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 Yes. And then there's going to, he's going to set up his kingdom, his earthly kingdom, which is the city of God, the people of the saints right. who live. That's right. And that's where all the other people that are saved out of that battle have to come up and do worship or they get a curse on them or like blessed, no rain. Then after a thousand years the devil because the devil's going to be tied up during this time, bound. That's then right. He's going to be loosed again and there's going to be another big battle. Right. So God you Mayhem. got it. You got it right. The Antichrist and the false prophet will not be able to help him no, because in the lake of fire. they go into the lake of fire when Jesus comes. They go into the lake of fire. We're talking the about the Antichrist and, the, and the false prophet. They are already at that point. You can look here. And, that's right. You can't fall back on those two guys. They're not going to help you because... Um, it says in Revelation 19, 20, it says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, 
that wrought miracles before him, which had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that had worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So there end the Antichrist, which is called the beast here, and the false prophet go and in. It also points out, like there's some say, not all are going to take that mark. Their names may not be in the book of life, but they still did not take that mark. Okay. That's that's a good point. You know, so there are... take the mark, it's going to go straight to hell. I think them brothers He talks... Well, that was Moses. That wasn't everybody. No, I think you'll see it in um, the New Testament also about not blotting out their names. So I think George is right when he says that everybody's name in the beginning was in the book. But as you make choices, you know, it's, it's like Joshua said. Well, he said the ones that are saved, their names aren't written heaven so they can't come into the city their lives may be spared let's say yeah. it that way their lives were spared they they still so exist their still there haven't been blotted out if it's they, blotted out then they go to the lake of fire right that's right because look here in revelation 20 it, it says at the great white throne it it tells us that in verse 15 whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that's revelation 20 and verse 15 and that lake of fire it says in the verse before it says death and hell was cast into the lake of fire this is the second death death and hell death and hell is in the waiting place where people are killed after that great white throne judgment. Well, right. it is it is for when you look at Luke 16, where you see uh, the rich man, and that he died, and also Lazarus, which who was a beggar that laid at his gate. Both of them. It says the angels carried Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. And it says that the rich man in torments lifted up his eyes and could see Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. He says, Father Abraham, have Lazarus come dip his finger in the water that I might cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. In that passage, we see that Abraham's bosom was in the bowels of the earth, and so was those that were in torments, right? And I believe that when Jesus went to the cross and died, that those three days that he spent was down in the bowels of the earth. Like he said, right. just as... Yes, that's where I'm going. Did some stay there then? Yes, the, the wicked. Some stayed, the wicked stayed there, but the, the, the righteous. The righteous. Yes. Paradise or yes. Or heaven, wherever that's at. Right. We're talking about the place of the good being moved from the bowels of the earth because so you can find that in, in the Psalms it says hell has enlarged itself. So if we look at Ephesians, it says here in um, Ephesians 4, and starting at verse 8, it says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Mine has a footnote that it says it should have been interpreted. He led a multitude of captives and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, was it 
but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. We're talking about Jesus. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Jesus is not still in the lower parts of the earth, but he has ascended, ascended. When those, uh, you know, he resurrected uh, on the third day, resurrection day, and then he showed himself alive for 40 days talking to his disciples about things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And then if you look in Acts 1, you see that he ascended up into heaven. That's where he's at. When Stephen was stoned, he looked up and he saw Jesus. That's right. At his right hand. That's where Jesus is now. Paul said to be absent from the flesh is to be present with the Lord. If God, if Jesus has ascended up into heaven and you leave this world, I expect you to go up to be with him. In fact, we see in Revelation 6 at the fifth seal that there are souls of those that were martyred during the tribulation during that time, during their lives, that are under the altar, and that altar is in heaven, not in below this earth. Is that clear? That's who's coming back with him when he comes. Yes, yes. Well, you, you know, um, I, I have heard teaching that says, well, see, it's talking about the Hagios is the being the holy ones that those are the angels and i am not negating that the angels will come with them but i do know this that he will bring back with him it says the dead in christ shall rise first that means pertaining to the body the dead in christ will rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them i do believe that they're coming back down for the millennial reign and and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we will be there. We will see it. I, I like that verse in Psalms 91 that says, only with our eyes shall we see and behold the destruction of the wicked. He won't have to fight. He's fighting for his standby. That's right. <laughs> we got your back. <laughs> I think this is probably a good stopping place right here. We'll pick up next week in uh, verse 5. Ada, go ahead and close this for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, there's a lot to digest here, but Lord, we're just thankful that you're allowing us time to study 